Brian here. So I'm going to be doing another Jeep project video. This is my second one today. Check out the new parts video that was posted before this. So today we're going to be back messing with the engine, trying to deal with our no start condition. If you remember on the other video, I have a busted up coil that has no conductivity anywhere in it. So I ordered a new coil through Rock Auto. It's a Delphi coil. So I feel like this is a fairly decent quality product. It was about $77 if I remember correctly. And it arrived a day early. Go Rock Auto. Great job. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to do some uh, continuity testing on it to see. And then we're going to put it in and see if the Jeep will start. Fingers crossed this saves my, my, solves my problem and then I feel a lot more comfortable taking the engine out and spending money on the body and doing other stuff to really get this Jeep going. And if you remember when I took these spark plugs out and did the compression test, I had some access issues, but the spark plug gap was like double what it should have been. It's crazy. It shouldn't have even been running. Maybe that's why I had an accident. At any rate, the spark plugs are shot to hell, but I'll deal with that later. Right now, I just want to see the thing run. And I think I've got fuel pressure, but unfortunately some bean counter bonehead at Chrysler decided to delete the Schrader port, test port on the fuel rail. The hell were you thinking? There's nowhere to test it. So to test it, you've got to cut the fuel line and do surgery. And yeah, I'm not going to do that today. Not if I can help, help it. So anyway, let me get this out. Let's do some testing on it and see if, I mean, you know, the cylinders fire in pairs. There should have been about 1,500 ohms of resistance between the cylinder pairs. And before we go too much further, let's put away this crappy compression tester from Horrible Freight. If you want to see the review on this, watch the spark plug video because this thing's a piece of crap. The gauge itself isn't bad. It's all the junk that went with it from the M14 mystery, mystery thread that doesn't line up with M14 one and a quarter from Chrysler or NGK to the migrating rubber tip on this that'll push back and let you push the metal into your cylinders. Yeah, that's a really nice quality feature there, horrible freight. $29 a junk is what it is. But hey, it did the job. I really wish I could have found my old uh, compression tester because I've got one from like the 90s and it was bulletproof, okay? So, I don't know why this has to be so damn complicated. So for now, we'll just add this to the collection of junk over there. A little tool abuse. All right. Why they use clear tape on this stuff? really nice. Wow. That's a pretty nice build. Might actually be OEM. And there's the connector we all hate. So let's hook it up. Let's do some testing on it. So we're going to set it here. I also want to do some comparison on it. You know, if this isn't the OEM manufacturer, it's a darn close copy. I mean a darn close copy. So remember, there was no electrical connectivity between any two pieces of this thing that should have conducted electricity. And I should have had it between all three coil pairs at 1500 ohms, and then I would have expected to see it over here that would have just that would have told, sent me the the uh, input side of the coils, and I, I didn't see any of it. So let me grab my multimeter. Multimeter's not junk either. It shouldn't be. Good tools are 
so hard to find. and see if it's a bad set of leads that suddenly went bad over the weekend. Where the hell did the other set of leads go? You know, I'm really ready to scream. I, I'm beginning to think it's this commercial electric stuff. Well, it might be the battery in this case. Let me stop and change the battery because I've got... It's showing me everything, and that's not a good sign. So there is something wrong with this multimeter. Depending on how you push on the case, determines whether it's errors or zeros. And this pisses me off, but I'm going to see if I can get through this one more project with it before I hurdle it at the concrete to get the, get the devil out of it. I don't know if it's going to make it. I gotta go find another multimeter because this one's really pissing me off. So I've got the cheapest multimeter I own, and I'm pretty sure this is a Harbor Freight piece of crap. I'm gonna have to go shopping for a new multimeter here pretty soon. One that is not a piece of crap, but we're gonna see, I think, yeah, these, these leads rarely go bad. So voltage and ohms, we want this side, and then it should have just a beeper on it. Okay, yep, so it does. So, so we should have connectivity between one. Well, let's start at the connector. I would expect some combination of these to have some kind of resistance. What I expect is one ground and three hots. Yep, so I have connectivity through all of these. Let's see what the, uh, so I'm gonna put it on 2K and let's just see what the coil readings are. This has gotta move somewhere else. Ooh, these coils have a lot of, Whatever it is, these coils have a lot of oomph. And then I need something to get down in here, so I'm just going to see if a screwdriver will do it. I'm not putting any force on this. I'm just letting it make contact because, again, I'm just reading for continuity. So I was, I thought one and, um, Oh, yeah, that would be one and six. I was going to say, I thought that was the firing pair. Let's start in the center, because I'm pretty sure both of these fire in alternates.
All right, so when I push, I get 15.37. Uh, so I want to say that's probably 1,500. So if I put it on 20K, I get 15.37 on those two. I get 15.08 on those two and 15.37. So the middle coils are slightly different. Let's repeat this experiment. Fifteen point four there. Fifteen point four there. And nothing there. So yeah, there's definitely something wrong with this coil pack. And then we had we had connectivity across all of these. So when I say connectivity, I just mean that like there's an electrical path. Maybe not. Oh, I see what's going on. So there's a diode in this. I'm getting a reading, but I don't think... That there will be a reading on the other side over here. And again, there's not a I mean I physically see damage, so I'm not I'm not I'm not doubting that this isn't bad. I just like repeatability in my nothing, nothing, nothing. confident in saying that that coil's bad, so it gets a promotion to trash, and then we're going to put the new coil in and just see if this changes things. Now, if you remember my other video, I cussed and swore about this, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the battery, because the access down in here is really difficult with the battery in here, and life will be simpler without the battery and without the battery charger. So let's just start there, pull this out, and this is a 10 millimeter wrench in case you are wondering, and I'm going to disconnect the ground first. by the positive side. And then I tuck the new negative up underneath the um, air conditioning line and tuck the positive out here uh, on the other side of the fender. bullshit. Suddenly the battery is held down. It wasn't before. So now I gotta get a 
a ratchet to undo that. And this is a really good use for my uh, DeWalt impact driver. I did a review on this yet. That should be enough to get me out. And that is a 5 sixteenths bullet. That's just some total bullshit because this battery has been loose in this vehicle since I bought it and I was like, what the hell? All right, we're going to tackle this with two. There we go. I guess the accident knocked it loose and I somehow managed to slip it back in place. But that is some total horse shit. All right, so now that we've got access, we can do battle. I really just question the wisdom of this entire design. clip that in place and then I got to try and fight it back here around all this stuff that this would just be so much easier if it was wires what the hell but this is just an asinine design there's no no good access back here start taking some stuff apart here. recommend using a pair of pliers to break a hose free before you remove it. And we'll deal with the other end of this in a minute. There's just no good access back there. It's proof that whoever designs this doesn't actually ever work on it. Because if they did, they wouldn't do what they did. So, I'll tell you what, these won't be going back in here. I have to crawl up in here to get to this. And 
and I don't believe you should have to take the heater hoses off in order to change the spark plugs. That's stupid. That's asinine. That's an unmaintainable vehicle. However, in our case, we're fixing to do an engine pull in order to uh, address some maintenance while I'm up here standing in the engine bay. So we got one heater hose out. Oops. And now we're going to pull the other one. Now, if this was an aluminum block engine, you absolutely could not do what I'm about to do to it, which is just start it and idle it. Man, what a pain in the ass. Um, you know, there's just stupid things can you do to bar access? Shit, where'd that go? No, but I can tell you where it didn't go. Gotcha. Never underestimate the power of a flashlight with a magnetic place. the fuck? Oh, are you kidding me? <sighs> I normally like to break those loose. But you can also twist them like this. I, I just need like a quarter turn which isn't there. <laughs> because again, whoever did this never had to work on it. There it goes.
Very good chance I'm going to replace those. So before mechanics get too excited, just understand that that was a cost of doing business. This is really a shitty design for everybody except the people who made the engine. So then, this was probably brilliant because it saved, you know, three minutes of work on the assembly line and reduced the parts count. I'm going to be looking into uh, if there's a way to delete this and go back to something else. Because, again, this is just a shitty design. We thought this was 9 16 which it is. Now, no, no, it's not. It's a half inch. enough that's something that needs to that's just a messy messy situation so now we can put the battery back in and see what happens Again, we're not looking to run the engine, we're just looking to turn it over and have it fire, run it for 10-15 seconds and we'll cut it back off. Because there's not coolant and there's a good chance it's going to shoot coolant out, but we'll see. I mean, I think it's halfway to bone dry, personally. Now it's time for a little potty break. I'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, now we're gonna see what happens. It's either gonna start or it won't. A lot better it runs I heard noises I'm sure there's more going on up here but that's okay 
I don't have a radiator and I've got some pieces missing from the coolant system, so I don't really want to test my luck and see what happens. It runs. I feel a lot better. Now, transfer case is in neutral, so I'm not going to tempt fate by fucking with anything. Um, for the moment, I'm just going to stop and I'm going to get the engine out of here so I can get it to the body shop and get the frame repaired.